In this four-part series, get an inside look on the making of one of the most anticipated titles in gaming history. This is... Inside Assassin's Creed 3. Ever since Europeans arrived in North America, they had been involved in shipping goods back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean. In order to make this economic system work, the British tried to control the goods that are going to the colonies. And it was those goods coming back and forth which made a few places on Eastern North America important. Whether it's the Boston Tea Party or the Boston Massacre. Fire! We have these big historical events that we can situate our game around. All of these events that people have a rough understanding of, but they're really never experienced. We had to go back and get our historian to find us accurate maps from the era of what Boston and New York looked like. These are actual replicas of the cities. If you're familiar with those cities, you should have that sort of eerie feeling of finding familiar sites. We really wanted to push the animations and just make it look like it's a real living world. As you walk through the crowd, you'll also see animals in the streets. They'd have a pig, they'd just clip his ear in a certain way, and they'd let him go in the street. And then he'd eat garbage, and then when it was time to eat the pig, you'd go and find your pig, and you'd slaughter it and eat your pig. We've got a lot of new ingredients that just bring a new, fresh feeling to the gameplay inside of the cities. We have these great new stocking zones that you're going to find throughout the cities. It's a great way for you to remain hidden from your enemies and actually be able to sneak up to them so that you can assassinate. We've got this amazing dynamic weather system in, so we can see not just the time of day passing, but also going in and seeing the same environments, not just in the summer, but in the winter as well. Even though it's a much more condensed area in the city, you actually have to be more careful. There will be carts moving past, so as you're running along the buildings, escaping some snipers, you'll be able to just dive off into a hay cart that's driving past. You'll be able to jump out of that, free run quickly through the streets, through a building, and jump out the other side, see people inside freaking out as you run past through their kitchen. Living on the frontier was extremely difficult. Not only did you have harsh winters, cold, freezing temperatures, in the summer you had heat, humidity. So it was a gamble every year that you were out on the frontier whether you're gonna make it or not. For AC3, the biggest difference is just having access to uh, the frontier. So this huge wilderness area that you can sort of explore at your own pace. It's a forest, the navigation in a very new environment, in a very organic environment as well. In the frontier, you'll be able to navigate through deep snow, but also snow does impact your gameplay. It will slow down you as well as your enemies. Once we decided that we were going to build the frontier, we realized obviously we need to populate that area. So animals became a very big deal. Uh, we have over two dozen different species of animals in the game. Uh, there's an entire hunting loop that you can engage in. Whenever you're building elements such as animals, you're halfway trying to be real and halfway trying to fulfill that fantasy of what people expect. One of the great new features we have in the frontier is the new tree running. Connor being really fluid and being able to navigate through the trees. The frontier is really our new playground. <laughs> This war at sea was truly a global war and involved not only the British, but the French and the Spanish and the Dutch. Naval engagement of that period was all about closing the distance. Boarding is the end game. You've got to be able to close with the enemy, get alongside, then get on board to steal his ship. You want to take that ship intact if you can, because that's where you get your prize. The prize is whatever is on that ship that you want. Naval warfare was absolutely decisive to success in the American Revolution.
Commerce comes by sea. At the same time, invaders come by sea. You control the sea and you control the conflict. It's a huge part of the historical period. The revolution is won pretty much at Yorktown by a blockade of ships. You know, we can't ignore this part of the history. This is critical. This is something that we have to do. We started a, a whole team up just to specifically focus on the naval experience. Naval combat has been a huge challenge. The technology of the wind, the water simulation has been a, a massive undertaking for the team. Initially, we didn't even think it was feasible because it's a big moving structure. It's a full simulation on high seas where Connor is controlling a ship. He's controlling uh, a crew as well, so he's kind of the master and commander on the ship. Very exciting. I mean, you are on a moving vessel that is very much part of the sea itself. This is something that we wanted to engage in and build for the game. That was a huge challenge that we set ourselves and actually turned out pretty good. If you haven't played any Assassin's Creed games before, we really think this is a great point to get on board. It is a new story, it is a new character. This team is full of people who love making Assassin's Creed. They were delivering just an astoundingly polished and fun experience. As a creator, nothing gets better. To be frank, it just looks great. Seeing all of this coming together at the end, it's amazing. For new fans, really, this is, this is about as good as it gets. It's by far the biggest and best Assassin's yet.